First of all, I will divide both sides by pi. Great job. And then I have 72 equals, and I will distribute. 1 half r cubed minus r squared. Then I have 1 half r cubed minus r squared minus 72 equals 0. I want to get rid of that 1 half in front, so I'll multiply by 2. So I have r cubed minus 2r squared and minus 148, uh, 44, of course. Any questions on this? We don't have any information on how to solve this equation. We do not know how to um, um, factor something like this. We don't know how to, um, we don't have a formula for this. There is one, but it's so long that we don't even want to look at it. Um, this problem was chosen, but they said do not talk about the real zeros of the function, of the um, polynomial. So what I would try, I would try to see if the polynomial is divisible by the divisors of 144. But I can't talk about that because they said don't talk about it. So, so let's put in the graphing calculator. Go to y equals and r cubed, which is x cubed. And then minus 2r squared, which is minus 2x squared. And then minus 144. And then we go to second and calc. And we want to determine the zero. We are determining the zeros of this function, which is number 2. I don't care for this zero. I'm in, interested in the radius that is positive. So I'm going to first graph it with zoom 6. This is not important. So I'm going to only look to the right hand side. I don't see anything yet because the viewing window is not appropriate for this function. So let's go to the x maximum. So I don't need, I only need 0 here. I don't care for the left hand side. The radius cannot be negative. So I have no idea where to go. I'm going to say 100 and with a scale of 20. And let's see what happens now. It was on the other side. Say it again. I think it was on the other side of their side. So I want to go to from 0 to x maximum 100. Right. With a scale of 20. What was the problem? You may be right, I may be wrong, maybe I don't see it. Can you say it again? I thought that the reason, that the reason because we're not seeing anything was because it was on the negative side. Because before you yeah, but this is zero point, now. Right? There is no negative side. You should have something right there. Just maybe I put in the... Uh, you put in a negative instead of a minus sign for the area of the picture. Uh, right next to the two. Yeah. Cool. I think it's the minus sign. There you go. Oh, yes. I see. Good catch. I would have not done it like this. I would have checked um, the rational zeros of the function. But Is it easier to check the rational zeros? Of course. There it is. Of course. The rational zeros theorem says that if a function has rational zeros, if an equation can be solved and it has rational zeros, then you would have to check and plug in some numbers. And I can give you the list of numbers that you can plug in. But we, since we already have an answer, uh, we're fine. So it's between, so this was the scale of, um, of scale of 5. So it was between 5 and 10. So um, second and calc, I won the 0. And it's between 5 and 10. And it's six. So r equals six centimeters. If r is six centimeters, then uh, now we can determine the height. So six divided by two is three, three minus one is two. 
And we can always go back and check. So this is 36 times 2, indeed 72. Any questions? Okay, final topic of this chapter is rational functions. And I think that this is 5.6, yes. Okay, so we know how to graph polynomial functions of any degree now, odd, even, it doesn't matter. Um, we know how to graph a long list of um, basic functions from linear to absolute value, square root, cube root, x, um, uh, the app, uh, what else? Um, that's about it. And, and I think we graphed one rational function. These are the most involved ones. We will have a few more functions to look at this semester. In the next chapter, in chapter 6, we will look at exponential and log. So this is one, exponential log, and then tree functions. And we're done with functions, I promise you. Okay? So this, and then chapter 6, and then the tree functions when we get the trick. Okay. Rational functions are basically of three types that we can look at, to be exact. So type 1, type 2, and type 3. No one calls them like that. I do. So I'll give you a few examples, and then you'll tell me what's different. f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 3 f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x squared uh, plus 10. Of type 2, f of x equals x over x squared minus 1. And type 3, f of x, x cubed plus 2x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. I claim that they are all different. Each one here. And I would like us to identify the category. Now, as I showed you a minute ago, my colleague said, don't talk about this. So I'm not going to talk about this. This is the only function that is mainly different than the other two. I'm not going to talk about that. But what can you say about the first one? Awesome. The type one is degree n over degree n. Indeed, that's that's it. What about type two? Higher in the denominator. Degree n and degree greater than n. Greater than this one. What is this one all about? Is degree n plus 1 over degree n, exactly by one unit higher. Exactly by one unit higher. But I'm not going to show that to you. I'm going to show the first two, which are basically the easiest ones. OK, so type 1 has same degree over same degree. Type 2, much higher degree than denominator. It doesn't matter by how much. It's not important. Type 3, exactly one degree higher at the top. But we will not talk about that one. So let's start with a list of things. When we graph, so let's graph f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 3. What type is this? Type 1. So what do we need to present? If you remember last time when we looked at um, polynomial functions, look how many, how long was the list? Domain, x and y intercepts, of course, we have the same thing here. Of course, max, min, if any. Of course, symmetry. There is no degree here. There is definitely n behavior. There is multiplicities. There is turns, but there is no indication of how many turns we have to look at the function. And we have other items to add to the list. So, domain, number two, x and y intercepts. Number three, 
vertical asymptotes. This is new. And behavior of f of x near those asymptotes. This is new. We have not discussed that before. Number four, end behavior, which we know. But it comes with an additional piece of information. And horizontal asymptotes. Asymptote. Five, symmetry. Of course, x and y intercepts, but for x intercepts, I'll say plus multiplicities. Of course. Not for the y intercept, it's never the case. But for the x intercept. So, vertical asymptotes and behavior of the function near the vertical asymptotes, and behavior and horizontal asymptotes, and symmetry. Of course, we will summarize all this information into the same type of table as we did before. Okay, so let's get the table going. Can anyone identify the domain of this function? Excellent. So negative infinity, 0 and 3, and infinity. That's good enough. If you present it like this, you don't have to separate separately write the domain of this function. Now, when a rational function, well, that's a note. When a rational function, Rf, is undefined. It can have either, not both, a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. When a rational function is undefined, like it is this one, it's undefined at three. It can have either a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. When it, it has a hole in the graph, let's discuss that and we'll come back to our function in a minute. Let's suppose I have this function. The function is undefined at negative 2, and the function is undefined at 5. Would you agree? Yeah. However, the factor of x plus 2 goes away. At x equals negative 2, whole. At x equals 5, vertical asymptote. So if the factor goes away with the factor from the top, the function, the original function, is still undefined at negative 2. It will have a hole in the graph, but since the factor goes away, it will not have a vertical asymptote. Now, x minus 5 stays as a factor. If it stays as a factor, that will be a vertical asymptote. In our case, for our first function, x minus 3 cannot be simplified with a factor of x minus 3 from the numerator. Therefore, at x equals 3, the function will have a vertical asymptote. So I already write x equals 3 is a VA, vertical asymptote. Because the factor of x minus 3 does not go away with the factor of x minus 3 from the top. Would you agree so far? Very good. Now, let's discuss the concept of asymptote, vertical asymptote. What does it mean? At x equals 3, this function, any questions? At x equals 3, this function has a vertical asymptote. Why? Because the sides, the 
the tendency of the function would be either going to infinity on the left hand side of this line, x equals 3, or possibly to negative infinity. The same thing on the other side, possibly to positive infinity or positive, positive possibly to negative infinity, not to both. So there are three possibilities. Maybe four, sorry. Positive infinity, both negative infinity, and one or the other. So I call this one, but there if you call you, you can call them two, right? So positive infinity one, negative infinity the other, or opposite, two more. So the answer right away, when once I identify that this is a uh, horizontal vertical asymptote, I know the left and right will be infinities, mandatory. But what I don't know is their sign. In order to determine the sign, you can say I can put in the calculator. You can. But it's easier if you just put in 3.1 and 2.9 in the function. Just give me the sign. With 2.9, notice that these values are not in the table. They're far up. I'm not going to plot them. I'm only using these numbers to determine the sign of infinities. So if I plug in 2.9, the top is positive, but the bottom will be negative. So then the sign will be negative on this side. When I plug in 3.1, the top is positive. What about the bottom? So then it's positive. So for now, I have the domain and I have the vertical asymptotes and behavior. That's what it's called, behavior of the function near those asymptotes. Let's continue with the x-intercept. Okay, so x-intercept, how do I determine it? Very good. y equals 0 means x plus 1 over x minus 3 equals 0. A fraction is 0 only when the numerator is 0. So x plus 1 equals 0 or x equals negative 1. So I go back to the table and I put negative 1, 0 as we did before. And now I have to find f of 0 in order to find the y-intercept. I have 0 at the top, 0 at the denominator, so 1 over negative 3. So this is negative 1 third. Of course, such a function will not be symmetric. If it has a vertical <coughs> asymptote under 3, it will not be symmetric. So f of negative x will not equal negative f of x will not equal f of x. Not symmetric. I have to write it. <coughs> The final step here is <clears throat> the end behavior and horizontal asymptote. Okay. I don't want to just give you the answer. I want us to build the answer together. So the function is x uh, minus 3 over x plus 1. Of course, it's minus minus, right? No, it's plus 1. Minus 3. Okay. So, what is the degree at the top? 1. Very good. I'm going to factor out the degree. What is the degree in the denominator? Perfect. I'm going to factor out the degree. Yes. As long as I can do, I can do this. I can factor out whatever I, I want. As long as what is in parentheses works out. Right? Meaning, x times whatever you give me is x, and x times whatever you give me is 1. I can factor anything I want. So x times what is x? Plus, x times what is 1? Excellent. Great job. The same thing here, right? So it's 1 minus 3 over x. Would you agree? Let's check. X times 1 is X. X times negative 3 over X will be negative 3. Agreed? Okay, perfect. I'm going to do this. So now, the simplified form for now is this. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to find what happens to the function when X gets very, very big in the negative sense, and what happens to the function when X gets very, very big in the positive sense. That's all I'm trying to do now. So when x goes to positive or negative infinity, 
where do you think this quantity will go or what will approach? And where do you think this quantity will go, what will approach? Like imagine we have a cake and we need to share it with the entire globe. When I knock on your door and I say, I'm here now, I have to give you a little piece, how much will you get? Nothing. You won't get nothing. Right? If we have to share it with the entire globe population, you're not going to get anything. No one will get anything. Agreed? So then what is the answer? When x approaches infinity, where does the function value go? Look, look over there and tell me where it's going. Positive what? Look at the expression. Do not look at me. Please look at the expression. Exactly one. Exactly one. And that is nothing else but the horizontal asymptote. Y equals 1, horizontal asymptote. This is always the case. This is always the case for same degree over same degree. It's the leading coefficient over the leading coefficient. Always. So our rational function. I still have four minutes. I know you're packed, but um, there is no yet. No use. So it's leading coefficient over leading coefficient. In this case, it happens to be 1 and 1. Okay, so all I care about is the table. I don't need anything else, and we are ready to graph. So yes, yes. Go ahead, Brian. When x reaches positive infinity, we're not talking about x here. We're talking about y, the function value. So when when x approaches infinity, this quantity disappears. Quiet, please. This quantity disappears, and the function values will approach 1 over 1. Why wouldn't you just try to find the infinity using the first option? Because infinity over infinity is an indeterminate case. You have to wait to count 1, and you'll see what it means. It's one of the seven indeterminate cases, right? How does it approach 1 x x is greater than 1, then it would be 1. x approaches infinity, not greater than 1. We're talking about billions. No, but then the fraction would be the fraction. The fraction would be one over one when this is billion. One over a billion is zero. One over three over a billion is zero. So one plus zero is one. One plus zero is one. One over one is one. So anything over infinite is zero. Just divide. Take and calculate and divide one by infinite. Uh, put ten thousand and see what you get. So we want to divide 1 by 10,000. Zero. Okay? So we're ready to graph this function. And remember that's all we care about is this. <laughs> yeah, I pressed the uh, document camera. Okay. Ready? Uh, this function has a vertical asymptote at 3. The asymptotes are not solid lines. Quiet, please. And it has a horizontal asymptote at 1. They are not solid lines. It crosses at negative one zero, it crosses at zero negative one third, and according to my table, here it is my table, the table says it's coming from one, crossing at negative one zero, crossing at zero negative one third, and going towards negative infinity on the left hand side of the vertical asymptote. On the other side, it's coming from positive infinity, and goes to 1. So this is our f of x, x plus 1 over x minus 3.